Good day grade 11s. Welcome to the third lesson in week 8. In this lesson we're going to be talking about Lewis diagrams and covalent bonding. Lewis diagrams are a way of drawing your valence electrons and ways of giving us a pictorial idea of how atoms bond. So before we start the video on that, I just want to remind you about what covalent bonding is. So covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between atoms to make a molecule. You have learned this before, so I'm not teaching you anything new. Okay, covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between atoms to make a molecule. So let's watch this excellent video. Electron dot diagrams. Here's lots of them here. I'm going to show you what they are and how they work. They're also called Lewis diagrams. So valence electrons or the outer shell electrons are represented by dots as you can see here with the oxygen. The covalent bonding electrons are these ones here and the non-bonding electrons are also called lone pairs. These are not forming covalent bonds. Now these covalent bonding electrons are to be placed between the atoms forming the bond because these are the ones that are going to be sharing with other atoms. These lone pair of non-bonding electrons can be put onto the outside. So here we have our covalent ones that are going to bond and we have another oxygen atom. So what will happen is they will share these electrons and these will be the covalently bonded electrons here. The ones that aren't being shared are the non-bonding electron pairs or the lone pairs. So how do we draw these electron dot diagrams? This is a step-by-step -step guide. The first step is you need to work out how many covalent bonds each atom requires. And remember we can do this by looking at the periodic table. So I've popped this here for you and we're going to do an example with nitrogen and fluorine. So if we have a look at nitrogen, nitrogen is in group 5 and it requires 3 more electrons to get a full outer shell. Fluorine is in group 7. It's got seven in its outside shell, so it needs one more electron. So this is the number of covalent bonds they're going to form. So one nitrogen can share electrons with three fluorine atoms. So the first thing you need to do is draw the electron dot diagram for the atom requiring the most covalent electrons. And in this case, this was nitrogen because it requires three covalent electrons, or in other words, it needs to share three electrons. And that's the three of them here that it will share. And of course, you've got the non-bonding lone pair of electrons up the top. So step three is to draw the electron dot diagram for the remainder of the atoms and making sure that those bonding electrons are between the atoms forming the bond. So here we have the diagram that we had before and we're going to place these covalent electrons between the other atoms. And here we go. If we put the other fluorines in with their valence electrons, which is seven for each fluorine, we can now see that these are the covalently bonding electrons for nitrogen and the covalently bonding electrons for fluorine. Each fluorine, remember, only needs to share one electron. So what will happen is this is the way that they will share them. So these are the covalent bonded electrons in between the nitrogen and the fluorine and all of these other ones will be the lone pairs or the non-bonding electron pairs. So if we look at the valence structure now, which is the structural formula, one line represents one pair of electrons. So when you look at chlorine, you'll see that the one line here will represent one pair of electrons. This will be the bonding pair of electrons. And these are your non-bonding or lone pair of electrons. But let's look at the example that we were just using, which was uh, the nitrogen with the fluorine. So this is where we were at. So 
So let's look at the example that we were just looking at, which is the nitrogen with the fluorine atoms. If we replace all of these pairs of electrons with one line, we will get a valence structure and it'll look something like this. So here you have the ones that are joining and these are the bonding electron pairs. These are all the lone pairs of electrons, so they're the non-bonding pairs of electrons. And if I take those away, I get a structure that looks like this. And if you're using the models, it will look something like this, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. So your electron dot diagrams look like this. This is water, and here you'll see its valence structure. And all that's been done is each of those electron pairs has been replaced by one single line. And we'll look at the shape of these um, in a couple of minutes. Oxygen, we've replaced here. There's two electron pairs, so there's two lines, and this is a double covalent bond. And here, there is one bonding pair between the hydrogen and the chlorine, and we've got three lone pairs, or three non-bonding pairs of electrons. So I'd like you to try an example now, and you've got some questions to answer, but I'm going to run through one example with you now on how to draw these. So let's look at the first one on question two, which is carbon plus chlorine. So we'll have a look at carbon, and we'll see that carbon requires to share four electrons, whereas chlorine only needs to share one electron. So we'll start by drawing carbon because it has to share the most, and it wants to share four electrons. So I'm going to colour those four electrons in. It's got four in its outside shell, and it needs to share all of those four. Let's look at chlorine. So chlorine's got seven electrons in its outside shell. And it needs to share one of those electrons to get a full outside shell. Each carbon needs to share four electrons, and each chlorine needs to share one electron. So we'll need four chlorines for each carbon atom. And there they are. What will happen now is these will form bonding electrons. And if you have a look now, carbon has got eight electrons and all of the chlorine have got eight electrons as well. Now to draw the structural formula, we just replace the electron pairs with lines. Each of these lines represents one pair of electrons. So these are the bonding electrons. Now we'll replace the non-bonding electrons, also known as the lone pair. And structurally, it'll change into this structure here. This is now known as CH4 because there's one carbon and four chlorine atoms, also known as methane. So let's look here at question three at example E and we need to draw the structural formula for this molecule here. OCl2. So if we have a look here at the periodic table, we need to first determine which of these is going to form the most covalent bonds. Oxygen is in group six, it will form two covalent bonds. Chlorine is in group seven, it will form one covalent bond. So we draw oxygen with its six electrons and it needs to form two covalent bonds, so these are the two here that will need to be shared. Chlorine has seven electrons in its outside shell. It needs to share one of these each. So what happens now is we can draw in the lone pairs of electrons here with lines, and that makes it a lot clearer for us to see what's going to happen. And what will happen now is these will form covalent bonds. So here we have their bonding pair of electrons and their lone pairs of electrons around the outside. So you should be able to complete these other ones now. Question four, give the number of bonding electron pairs and the number of electron non-bonding pairs in the following molecules. Now I'm going to show you an example of water and then you should be able to complete the other ones. So water, 
if we have oxygen and we have hydrogen, we have two hydrogens, one oxygen. Oxygen has got six electrons in its outside shell and hydrogen, each one has one electron. Oxygen needs to share two to get its full outside shell and hydrogen needs to share their electrons. So we can replace the non-bonding pair of electrons with lines already to indicate they're the lone pairs and these electrons will now form bonds, covalent bonds with one another and we can replace those with lines as well. So this will be the structural formula or the valence structure formula for water. So we can see here we've got two bonding electron pairs and two non-bonding electron pairs. Right, grade 11, so I hope you found that to be a very useful video. I did. I would really suggest that you try and do those questions. You know that you can pause the video at any point in time and try and complete those tables and then go check with your mentors and with your colleagues and your friends and make sure that you got everything right. Have a great day.